everybody. Welcome to the game plan. Hope everyone's doing wonderfully well today. Sorry we're running a couple minutes late. Lots of data coming out. I'm going to get into it all. So without further delay, we got to talk some PPI numbers. Let's rock and roll. Okay, right over here, guys, what we're going to do first is go through our key action events. Now, what are we going to look at? We're going to look at the PPI data. Now, check this out. Here's our morning blast on the website. You can go see it anytime you want. We scroll down, we have to look at this PPI data because again, yesterday the CPI data was so hot. It was so much higher than expected. Check this out, what do we have here? We have PPI comes in at 0.2 versus 0.3% month over month. In other words, less inflation than expected. A ray of hope, maybe we're not seeing as much inflation as we thought or maybe the market anticipated. Okay, so that's key. Last month, by the way, was 0.6, so very, very hot last month. But either way, 0.3 was expected, it came in at 0.2. Core PPI comes in at 0.2 versus 0.2. That was in line with expectations. Initial claims, still very strong, 211,000. When I say strong, by the way, it's not that the number was strong, it's that it was low. With initial claims, these are people filing for unemployment. And that, again, the lower the number, the better the number for the economy. Now, again, the market would prefer a little higher number because it would tell us that the economy is weakening with more people filing for unemployment. But that is just not what we're seeing. All right, last week was two, or last, excuse me, expectations were 216,000. Last week was 221,000. All right, the only stock on my radar this morning, and there's other stocks, but basically one that had big news is CarMax. CarMax drops nearly 10% as the company sees poor auto sales, all right? Used auto sales slowing down dramatically. Another signal that the consumer is starting to pull back. We've seen more and more of this data here. Okay, couple things to go over here real quick. I'm going to flip back to the homepage on the website, and we're going to scroll down. At the bottom, we have our Fed Watch tool. What's the Fed Watch tool showing us? Let's take a look here. We bring it right up. And what we can see, guys, is even with this PPI data, we're still not anticipating a rate cut in June or July, right? So again, you can clearly see, here's your June meeting, here's your July meeting. Both of those have interest rates staying at five and a quarter to five and a half percent per the Fed funds rate. All right, so again, high probabilities. Now, again, the kicker is that we're now anticipating, or at least the market's anticipating, that in the September meeting, they will cut. And if they don't cut, it'll be in the next meeting. So one of these two meetings, you'll get a cut. But the important thing here, guys, is that basically we're still now looking. And yesterday, this was different. So the one change here is that yesterday after that CPI data last night, the markets were only expecting one rate cut this year. After the PPI data today, we're back to two rate cuts. So if you look, here's your December meeting. There's a cut. And here's your prior meetings in September, right? September and November, and you're going to get a cut in one of those two meetings. So one cut, two cuts right there. That is what the market is anticipating. Now, listen, I'm going to talk about this. Yesterday to members of Smart Money Stocks and, and ETFs, I posted up last night. I was doing research. I did a video showing the TLT. The TLT basically goes up when rates come down. It's a way to play it for retail investors to play the potential of a pullback in rates. I was looking at this chart, and I'm like, holy cow. I think rates have topped in the near term here. Now, I know that's a huge shocker because you turn on mainstream media, everyone's talking about higher rates now, higher rates, going back to 5%. I don't see it now, and I'm going to show you why in just one second, all right? <clears throat> now, before we do that, let's find out who wins the Lux Algo Premium for a year. Amazing right here. We're going to find this out, then we're going to do another spin in just a little while and give out more stuff for tomorrow. So the winner today, guys, for Lux Algo Premium One Year Membership is, let's see what we got here. There it is, Sanket Paital. 4177. I apologize if I murdered that name there, but either way, you can see it on the screen. Congratulations. That's a great win right there for Lux Algo, which continues to be one of the biggest sponsors we have. They are such a great supporter. They understand data, and that's what they do, folks. Remember, they're all about data and, and signals on the charts. That's exactly what we do. It goes hand and hand. All right, so a couple other things to go over here. Let's go into the charts. Let's take a look. So this is the 10-year yield. The 10-year yield going into this, by the way, this is the 10-minute chart. 10-year yield going into the number today was, was up, up, right? So you were rallying. This is the 10-minute chart, so up into the number, and then look at the flush on yields. Now, it's not a huge drop, but in yield terms, it is significant. The kicker is this, right? And I'm going to go to the daily chart. 
So the first thing before I go to the daily chart is we flip over there, and I'll talk the chart in just a second, is that number one, yesterday, there was a huge shift. We had the third CPI month in a row where people got very, like, shocked. Like, oh my gosh, inflation, inflation is going up, up, and away. Three, they say three is a charm, right? Or, or three strikes, you're out, or whatever it is. It creates a psychological trigger in the brain. And this is where you get into the psychology of investing and trading, where now people are now conditioned to think after three numbers of surprises that inflation is just soaring. And people's worries are all of a sudden like, holy cow, we're going back, you know, inflation's gonna go up ridiculously. All of these crazy kind of thoughts, it takes the narrative away from the, okay, everything's gonna be fine to panic. And I use that in my analysis to judge when you get way too far leaning one way or way too far leaning the other way. In this case, yesterday's number pushed people too far to the, oh my goodness, the world is gonna end via inflation narrative versus reality, which is, yeah, inflation's upticking, but it's not like going crazy at this point. Sure, you're looking at a lot of these uh, commodities moving up, but it's not as crazy as people would think. And usually there's a check back. This is how charts work. They go too far in one direction and they pull back. Sentiment psychology goes in too far in one direction, they pull back. So let's get into this chart here. So number one, I had a target for you guys that I've talked about in previous game plans, right? This 4.55 level right here. All right, now it was this pivot point right here and right here, and you can see that line. And once we broke this one, that was my next target. It got achieved yesterday, as you guys saw very clearly. In fact, we even pierced it, getting close ahead of the number, the PPI number today, close to 4.6%. As you can see, we're back below it. So you have to trust the charts. As crazy as the action is, the charts right here were telling me per this signal that we should have a pullback in rates. Next, all right, so again, Every good investor uses a confluence of factors, not just one factor. One factor gives you 50-50, 60-40, maybe something in that range. That's not great odds, right? I want 65, 70, 75, 80% odds. What do we do here? So let's, let's take a look at this. I'm gonna erase a couple of these lines on the chart. Let's just get them out of the way. I don't even need to have them on here at this point. We're gonna just leave that one target. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a Fibonacci retrace, right? We're gonna take it from this high to this low and let's see where the fib lines level up. Let's see if that gives us a secondary level. So right away, what are we doing? We're taking this high, dragging our fibs down to the lows, and look at that, okay? So for those of you that don't know about fibs, these fibs are amazing. Uh, they appear naturally in nature everywhere. You look everywhere, there's always these Fibonacci sequences. It's one of the reasons why I believe in them in the charts. Doesn't mean they're foolproof. They obviously can get broken, but the point is when you have another level that's lining up, that's very powerful. Sure enough, what's this FIB level right here? The 618 Fibonacci retrace from this high to this low. Where is it? Literally almost to the exact marker of my 4.55 level. So that again right there was making me think, wait a minute, I didn't realize, and I hadn't seen this before, or maybe I did and I just forgot. But like I look at that and last night I'm like, holy cow, I gotta alert my members here of smart money, stocks and commodities to this factor because this could mean rates start to roll over here. Now you'd think, oh, that's great for the markets. Yeah, it's rallying the markets today, but if we start to get economic data that's weak, it won't be so good if rates are going down because of weak economic data. It's one thing for rates coming down because inflation's not as bad, another for the economy's factor. Okay, so that was the first thing. Then I said, well, what if I look at the bigger time frame? And I'm walking you through step-by-step step my, my kind of mindset. So let's get rid of these fibs and let's even get rid of this line right here. Let's just keep a clean chart. Now I zoomed out and I'm like, okay, well, this is an interesting chart. It kind of almost is a little familiar to a head and shoulders beginning to form. Head and shoulders. All right, that's a bearish technical formation on the charts. Let's, let's look at what I'm looking at here, and then I'll draw it in for you guys. But basically, what you're looking at here, you have shoulder, head, and then I said to myself, if we roll over here, and I'm right, that we're gonna start pulling back, this could start to roll over like this and make a right shoulder. Now all of a sudden we have some crazy stuff going on because essentially what we're talking about is if the neckline breaks, you can actually figure out where rates should bottom by using a measured move. So let me draw this in guys, all right? And to do this, I'm gonna shrink it down just a little bit so we can drag the chart over and we can kind of game plan this out, if you will, using the term of the show. Okay, so grabbing my head and shoulder tool, we draw it up, we draw it here to the low end there. That would be your first point. Here's your head. We bring this down. Then you bring this up here. And let's just say over 
the next, I don't know, let's say, uh, bear with me here. As Let's just say over the next two to three weeks, we come down here. Now you can start to see the pattern. And I apologize. I was doing it without showing the screen here. But right there, what we have is you guys can see it, right? There's the potential. So listen, I'm, I'm, I'm gaming the charts like five steps ahead, which is what traders have to do, right? You have to look at all avenues. Now you can't assume this is gonna happen, but you just wanna have it in the back of your mind and then you put the other factors together and you say, okay, well, what if this happens? Does this make sense? What if the economy starts to weaken? What if we start to see the jobs market start to weaken? Well, then you would get rates to roll over even if inflation is staying north of 3%. So if that does happen, where would our target be? Let's do a target calculation here. All right, so we take our calculation, our price range, we take it from the highest point of the head, we drop it right down to the neckline, so highest point and take it right there. That's about a 1.4% drop on rates, right? So again, we'll do it right there. You, from the break point, now this is the one tricky thing, we don't know if it's breaking here, 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 or here, but let's just say it breaks over here. Let's do a, a general estimate. And if we drop that down and we drop 1.4%, we're actually coming back to approximately 2.75% on the 10-year. All right, so think about that, guys. Where's the economy? If rates have to come back to 2.75%, where's the economy? But I, what I love about this is that, you know, yesterday I'm sitting there watching a little CNBC. I'm watching a little Bloomberg after the CPI data. And I, and I do this not necessarily because I'm like, hey, listen, I need to know this information. These are experts. But I'm actually looking for the the biases and when everyone is talking one direction i start to think in my head i have this bell that goes off and i've trained my brain for this and it starts to go off and say wait a minute if everyone's saying that then expectations are too far on this side and there's probably a check back in this direction and by the way it doesn't mean inflation is going to start going back down again i just think that ultimately people's expectations got crazy like the nightmare started like oh my gosh here we go back to nine percent it's like Let's calm down. Let's use the level heads here. Let's take it step by step. All right, I thought that was a really cool, interesting chart. Now, listen, please be aware. Doesn't mean this is going to happen. I mean, for all I know, we are going to go up here, and we once we take out the head here, that's totally off the table. Um, that's a possibility. But again, knowing that we're at the 618 and that trend line, and we now saw the PPI data, it does make me wonder if we now, let's say we get the PPI data, and then we start to see the economic numbers roll over in the next month, this could definitely play out. All right, going through just a couple more charts here, and then we'll get into some commodities, taking a look at the S&P 500. So this was yesterday's drop on the back of that CPI. Today, we're getting a decent reflex bounce. To be honest, it's not negating, right? So, so please understand that inflation numbers were ever so slightly better than expected for PPI, but it doesn't overpower the negativity of the CPI data. And that's why you get such a big drop here with, uh, you know, it's a good bounce today, but it's not a massive bounce to the upside, okay? Now, just a reminder is that per the charts, we have confirmed below this pattern, and you can see ever since we got below, you can start to see the weakness coming in. Now, we'll get a little bounce today. We'll see if it holds up. If it doesn't hold up, that's very concerning. But ultimately, I still expect an eventual rollover in the S&P 500. Just a couple notes here. We do have Apple, which has now broken its head and shoulder pattern here. First target still remains down at this level right down here. So again, nice little chart there. Uh, we'll probably get to bounce today as long as it doesn't or get back above that level of about 171-ish, give or take. Then you continue to favor that 155 level. A um, couple other charts here that I wanted to just go over. Boeing. Boeing hit a key level yesterday that I've been telling you guys about for quite some time. This pivot over here, right in here, we hit it right here, and we actually got a bounce. I haven't looked at what it's trading at today, but again, nonetheless, Boeing getting a little bounce. Remember, always look at things as level-headed, and this is a good example with Boeing, is that if Boeing gets a bounce here, which it bounced about $2 off that line yesterday alone, but let's just say it goes back up 5 or 10 bucks. the idea is the bearishness from all the headlines is making people overly bearish, and there's gonna be a check back in the opposite direction. That type of thinking is the type of thinking that gets you on the cutting edge of moves when you use technical analysis. All right, couple other charts real quick. I continue to be a fan of the Chinese market. Um, by the way, the Chinese, uh, yesterday China reported their CPI, they actually saw deflation. Deflation is not just less inflation or zero inflation, it's actually numbers are going down. Now, why was that important to me? Well. 
when you look at the chart of Alibaba, right, or we can look at KWeb, there's definitely kind of this general vicinity chart pattern here. In addition, when you have deflation, it's essentially what the U.S. saw right during that COVID panic. You know, there was so much panic. Everyone was pulling back on spending enormously. And what did the Fed do? The Fed printed more money than we've ever seen printed before. The U.S. government did as well. And what happened to the stock markets? The stock markets went like this, right? So the concept here, and again, this is, again, a game theory, right? So nothing's guaranteed. We know that. But the idea that I'm thinking is you have very bullish charts forming on, on a, lots of these major Chinese stocks. Do they potentially, with the Chinese seeing deflation, it opens the door for them to print more money than they've ever printed before. And regardless of how unhealthy that is for the system, it, if you're an investor, it's great. Right, printing money. There's no doubt. There's a correlation between printing money and the stock market going up. Right, it's risk on, baby. So the idea here is maybe we start to get some sort of up move on these beaten down China names. And I continue to like even a name like KWeb, which is more the ETF that tracks a lot of these. So if we zoom out on KWeb, we can see this longer term kind of parallel. And look, price is now broken above that. So again, you know, if you're asking me where would I invest right now, well, China's definitely risky. You still have the Taiwan concern and all that, so you can't invest a lot there. But for me, at least, I've put a little bit of money into that market in hopes that we do see that mega size move to the upside. So just an idea there, kind of a, a thought process. Okay, let's jump back here. We're going to do a quick spin of the wheel, guys, uh, and then we're going to go right into the commodities as well as crypto. There we go. One year of NordVPN, guys. Thank you, NordVPN, for being a sponsor. Awesome there. So a free year of NordVPN for anyone who, again, wins tomorrow. Last one of the week there. And again, NordVPN, one-year membership free for some of you guys out there or one of you guys out there that wins tomorrow. All right, so that's awesome right there. The question today is going to be, what do you guys think about rates? Have interest rates topped here, or is this a fake out and we're still going to go higher? So going back to what I talked about, feel free to say, ah, I don't agree with your technical analysis. I still think we're going higher. Totally understandable, guys. That's the beauty of TA is that there's always a chance it does something else. I only find where the probabilities may lie, but anything can happen. All right, let's jump over here, guys. We're going to go into Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin's not doing a lot. Had a great reversal yesterday. Got to be impressed with Bitcoin. Um, yesterday, we saw an early flush with the CPI, and then it's pushing up again. Now, again, in based on the charts, has anything changed from yesterday from what I've said? The answer is no, right? We still have double top resistance up here, and we still have this level down here. So until one of these breaks, one direction or the other, basically price could literally just go like this, right? Until it's forced out. These two lines will meet somewhere off the screen and price will be forced out of it. But right now, again, regardless of whether it's up for the day or down for the day, it doesn't really matter unless, again, you get below here and confirm or above here and confirm. So just keep that in mind. You know, it's nice to see the price action yesterday if you're a Bitcoin bull because the whole rest of the risk on market sold off. But today, again, we're basically flat and the stock market's bouncing. So maybe it all evens out. Um, haven't looked at Solana in a few days, but Solana continues to be an interesting one. I continue to be bearish on Solana overall. You can see this bigger breakdown. We actually just touched a support level one right here. This low was exactly this low. So that's your first technical level of support. We'll see if it's able to get its mojo back and start to move up. If it breaks this area at around 160, then you're probably headed down to about 130 here on the chart. So again, 130 though, there is a confluence of multiple levels here. So it would be an interesting level to kind of take note of. The other thing, I haven't done this yet, but what if we, I mean, I just, and again, I'm literally going to do this live with you guys, but let's just see, what if we do a, a Fibonacci retrace from the highs? Is there any confluence there? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this low from the beginning of the bull move right down here. We're going to drag our fibs up here, okay? So if we drag it up there, yeah, actually, interestingly enough, it looks like, um, if I'm doing this right, let me just do it one more time here. Fibonacci retrace, we take our low right here and we drag it up. Yeah, so it looks like actually the 50% retrace would be right in that vicinity. It's not exact, but it's right below. Interestingly enough, it's another technical level. So you have this level here, this level here, and then the convergence of this to this right to here. 
Uh, but then right below it, this area here and right here, that's the 50%. So what that does is it reinforces the zone. Sometimes these things won't align up perfectly to the penny like with the TLT, but ultimately the zone is important and that is what we're seeing there. So it looks like anywhere between 130 and 115 on Solana is very uh, solid. Uh, gold today, let's do a quick check on gold. Gold did pop a little bit on the back, and this is the 10-minute chart of the, CP, uh, of the PPI data. But again, it isn't taking out the highs yet. So again, I'm still in the camp that that bigger bearish hit of, of resistance, I still think you got to see a pullback, guys. Just the healthy nature of things. My guess is, again, a little bit of a pullback on that monthly chart. And again, you can see it right here. We're still right up into that level. Now, eventually, is oil, uh, gold going to 2,500? Yes. Uh, silver, a little bit of a bounce there. Natural gas, small pullback after yesterday's initial move up. One thing on Nat Gas to note, we hit this high right here. We dragged that right across. It went right there. It makes sense to have a little bit of a check back, and then I still think we get a bigger move up on the Nat Gas chart. And lastly, guys, let's touch base on oil. Oil again, let's see what we have on this oil chart. Looks like oil's coming down today. Oil was actually up yesterday. I have a hypothesis that yesterday you saw money going from technology and these higher risk plays like the Russell, the small caps, into oil trades. And that's why oil was actually up yesterday on a hotter number. But then today the stock market's getting a bounce. So people are rotating money out and back towards technology. And that's why oil's coming down. So oil in, in some weird ways is like a safe haven in certain situations. And I think that's probably what's going on there. The one thing I will say, guys, again, we confirmed above this level. And what kind of pattern is this starting to make? Like, that could be a bull flag. It's possible. So we'll have to watch that in the coming uh, sessions here of the game plan. All right, back to center screen, guys. I got to get to the trading room, uh, the Apex Live Day trading room here at Verified Investing. It is awesome here, as always. And again, we just keep kind of doing our best to make money and, and trading live. So come join us there at the Apex if you're a day trader. And uh, ultimately, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you guys for being amazing uh, supporters of Verified Investing. I'm going to do my best to always bring you the truth. Everything breaking, everything I know, right from here, right to you guys right there. Have a good one. Take care.